Hello everybody, I'm Dan. Welcome to my Java tutorial series. Throughout my tutorials I will teach you Java using just Notepad in the command prompt. The order in which my tutorials are organized on both my website at javacjava.com and my YouTube playlist is designed to maximize learning by building on concepts from prior tutorials. This tutorial is a uh, basically an introduction to regex quantifiers. I'm going to open up my web browser to my website javacjava.com, select a little pop out menu and then select regex tutorials. Scroll here to regex quantifier tutorial introduction. So um, quantifiers utilize the following meta characters, the question mark, the asterisk, the plus, the left curly brace, the comma, and the right curly brace. Now there may be occasions where you want to specify how many times the pattern occurs in a string. Quantifiers allow you to do just that, just in ways that you might not expect. Now there are base, three basic categories of quantifiers greedy, reluctant, and possessive. I am going to detail each of these categories in their own separate tutorials, but this tutorial will introduce you to some of the, some, to some simple greedy quantifiers. I will demonstrate how to use the left curly brace, the comma, and the right curly brace meta characters in this introduction. Now there are three possible ways to use those meta characters as quantifiers. The first way, and basically you've got your expression here, right? and then you've got your left curly brace, the number three, and your right curly brace. So that, that basically, this whole reg x here, means that the expression must occur exactly, right, three times in the search string, okay? And then you can have, for example, your expression, and then curly brace, and then three comma seven, and this means that the expression must occur between three to seven times, and that's inclusive of three and seven in the search string. And then the final way you can use these meta characters is the expression, left curly brace, like for example, four, comma, and then leave the next, um, basically you'd expect there to be some sort of argument or parameter, or leave that blank, and then just put in your right curly brace. And that means the expression must occur at least four times in the search string. So five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to infinity is just fine. So let's take a look at some, uh, some examples here before we dive into a bunch of stuff in the code here. So we've got this pattern lime, right? And then we've got our quantifier and we're specifying one. And then in our mattress string here, I've got five limes for a dollar. And the, the find result will be true on this, okay? Now let's say for example, round, and I've got the uh, quantifier here with the number two in there. And I'm searching for the string, the wheels on the bus go round and round. This is going to return false, and I'll get, get why in just a second, and I'll explain why this word returned true in just a second here, okay? Now, um, round two is the exact same reg regular expression here, and we search this string here, the wheels on the bus go round with an extra D right here, and round here, this is gonna return back true. All right, you might be going, all right, well, now you lost me. All right, well, let's talk about what, what we're doing here, is we basically have what appears to be you know, a string literal regex there, right? But, but what in fact we have is, um, since there is no grouping or anything like that, there's no capture group, the way this is interpreted is that you have the string literal lim, right? And then you have the character e, and the e must occur exactly once after the string literal lim. Or you could do, say exactly, you know, we have the characters l and i and m all in a string, right? And then the character E, and it can only be E can only occur once after that, okay? Or has to occur at least once after the M. So lime, right here in limes, actually returns back true just because we've specified one here. Now when we specify round, we might be thinking, oh, okay, well we want to search this whole string for round and round, and but we want it only to be in twice in this whole string. Well, it doesn't, doesn't work like that, okay? What we ended up doing right here is we want the uh, characters R, O, U, N, and then we'll have two Ds after that. And since we only have one D and then a space, and one D, and then basically that's the end of our string there, this is gonna return back false. So with the same one right here, that's why this one right here returned good, because we got R, O, U, N, right? That matches our search criteria there, our pattern. And then we got the D twice, which is right here. So hey, we found it and it matched it right here. That returns true, okay? Now let's talk about what you might think is, oh, okay, well, let's just include it in a capture group, right? So we've got a capture group with round and two. 
Will that do it? No, that round and round is not going to find it. It's going to be false. And I'll show you later on when I get to the pattern class common methods tutorial how we can do exactly what we might be thinking we're looking for here and finding the, the word round in the string twice. So here's the way it actually works is by enclosing this in a capture group, we're in fact searching for the entire string literal round twice over, right? So the wheels and the bus go round, round with no space inside of there and that'll return back true because it found round duplicated twice. At this point you might go, well, what on earth? This is just kind of not what I was expecting or what's the point of this, right? So I'm gonna do a lot of this, a lot of this stuff. I'm gonna show you where this comes in really, really valuable here when you're doing, you know, when you're ensuring that uh, your expressions match whatever pattern you're looking for. Let's come down here and highlight this source code here. Control C to copy or right click and select copy. Oh yeah, one more thing. The following code will build on all concepts discussed in all of my regex tutorials thus far. So if you haven't watched any of them, I highly recommend you watch my whole regex tutorial series. So I'm going to move my browser off screen here and I've got a shortcut to the command prompt set up on my desktop. But if you don't have one, you can create one really fast by right clicking, selecting new shortcut. Be next and finish. It's just that easy. If you're new to my tutorials, the first thing you want to do when you open it up is type in Java C, which is the Java compiler command. You should see all this stuff scroll by. However, if you receive an error message, uh, watch my tutorial on installing the Java development kit. You want to make sure you get that installed and configured properly before continuing. CLS to clear the screen. CD space backslash CD short for change directory backslash tells it to go to the root. I'm going to make a directory here called Java using the MD command. Now, I already have that folder, but if you don't have that folder, we'll go ahead and create one for you. Let's change directories to the Java folder. I'm going to make a directory here, and I'm going to call this one uh, regex quantifier intro. Okay, let's change directories to that folder. I'm going to notepad. But I uh, got this new keypad a couple weeks ago. I just can't get used to it. It's got slider, smaller. Um, it's not as wide as my old keyboard there because it's got some control characters along the left-hand side. But anyway, I'm still getting used to the thing. But I'm not typing as fast as I used to. Driving me somewhat crazy. Okay, so regex quantifier intro dot job is the name of our source code file, also known as a compilation unit. All right, let's go ahead and paste this stuff in there. Control V or right click and select paste. Um, so let's go up here and save this first. So typical stuff, I'm importing the Java Util Regex package there. And I've got this method here called display find, right? If you're watching my other tutorials, I pass in a regex, the regex string, and then uh, basically the what we want, or regex pattern, and then basically whatever we want to search it with there, right? And then we, um, using the pattern static compile method, we um, create a pattern um, that basically creates a pattern object that we can evoke the matcher method on to return back a matcher, um, a reference to a matcher object here, right? Uh, that all makes sense. I just split it up, split the two lines into one right here. And then, of course, the find, you know, it'll continue, find it'll return back true as long as it finds patterns in there, and that'll display that stuff. Fairly simple on that. Let's come up here and um, let's go ahead and compile this. Let's clear our screen. Java C to compile it, Java to run it, okay? And we're gonna scroll up here. I'm just gonna go statement by statement to kind of show you what's going on here, okay? Now, exactly what I talked about before there, right? Found lime at index two for regex, you know, lime in string five limes for a dollar. No problemo there, okay? No matches found for round two and wheels on the bus go round and round, right? Found round DD, for regex round D, right, with the um, quantifier two right on there, that only applies to the D for the wheels, and the bus go round DD and round, right? Um, just right here, right? And um, of course, if we just do that again, it's going to find that that basically that search string twice, okay? Uh, so all in all, fairly straightforward so far here. We'll get into some new stuff in just a second. All right. Um, then just to show you here, if we do, um, in, we use the capturing group round, right? Two, the wheels on the bus go round and round. We still get no matches, but we, if we do capturing group round and then quantifier two um, for the wheels on the bus go round, round, right? It will actually found, found that. All right, now let's talk about some other stuff down here, right? 
We've got, um, I thought I'd go ahead and do like an example of <clears throat> a character class here, A or E, right? And so basically, could this be read as like, all right, we're looking for either A or an E um, within four to seven times in this particular string here, right? And here we've got a, and of course it's case sensitive. Here's an E, an E, an E, and here's a lowercase a. Now what will this return back? Well, this will return back no match is found. And I'll show you why here in just a second there, okay? Um, in this next one here, we're searching for an A or an E four to seven of them, and I'm searching in here, I've got seven E's right in a row, and that found it, okay? And the reason why it found it is because these have to be sequential, right? And you'll see in this next one here, A, E, four, seven, if I search for E, A, E, E, right? That'll find it too. And basically the way this works is we're searching for either an A, either four to seven A's, or four to seven E's, or a combination of four to seven A's or E's, right? And that is basically the way this works. So because there are four E's here, they're just not sequential there in this particular uh, string literal up here, okay? And then so you can see down here, last usage of it is, you know, four common, leave that second one blank. We're searching for either an, either an A or an E, so minimum of four A's or E's or some combination of them together, and searching for the string literal, you know, oh crap, right? And so of course it finds it, okay? And it'll show all of the A's that it found because we're specifying four or more, so. Okay, all right, so at this point in time you might be going, well this doesn't seem like it's all that great. So let, let me show you a couple of things here. So I'm gonna do something that, you know, if you ever do this here in your code, you probably really might be messing with your coworkers, might piss them off a little bit if they look at it and go, what are you doing, you know? But let's say for example, um, I'll just do this to show you something crazy on this and then I'll go into really what what you might end up really truly using this for in real life there. But let's take this uh, int i equals set it equal to zero and I'm gonna set up a while loop here, right? And that's basically the while uh, body there. And so we're just doing a pattern compile and here's our regular expression, two zero followed by the quantifier four. So this is basically gonna be, we're searching for two followed by four zeros, okay? And then we're going to match it off the string and then basically we're just going to be simply looping through and adding one to i, right, ahead of i. So we're forcing that to do that. And by taking an empty string and using the plus um, operator here, that, that's a cheap, easy way to convert an, uh, you know, an integer to a string there. Okay, so we'll be searching for two followed by four zeros um, in the string literal here as this is going up. Now, of course, fine will return back false. So we wanna say while it's not false, then we're gonna go ahead and increment i, okay? And then we'll display this to the console, i plus leagues under the sea, right? You get 20,000 leagues under the sea. It's an old, old book there, but anyway. So hopefully this makes sense on doing something like that, right? You can do, it's uh, your coworkers would probably kill you if you did a you know a, a while loop or an incrementing for loop or something like that in this particular format there. But anyway, um, let's get back to to something that that's a little bit more serious here. Now my meta characters tutorial. If you remember the uh, the slash d is a digit, right? So that's the digits zero through nine. So in this particular thing, if we break this down, of course we have to have the escape sequence there for the backslash. So there is our, our basically we're specifying digits and we want to have three digits and then we want to have a dash, right? Because this is representing, we're searching this phone number string right here, 8675309, right? And so if we want to validate that this is in fact a valid phone number, we can use this regular expression right here, okay? So we're going to have three digits followed by a dash character, followed by four digits, okay? So take a look at that, and so it'll say found a 675309 I'm saying, oh, because that's that, that stupid song, you know, but anyway, um, that's why I stuck it in there, but 09 technically. If you don't know that song, it's got a catchy little chorus that just sticks in your mind and can't get rid of it, but anyway, found it at index zero, you know, for this regex right here in that string there. All right, so let's say for example, we, we swap it and do it this way here, right? I was gonna say no match is found because we're not, we don't have, um, we don't have three digits. We have four digits followed by a dash and then three digits. So um, 
It's actually this that's failing out right there, and I'll demonstrate that here. So in this next one here, using the same reg expression here, and we add a one in front of here, one, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine. And um, will this return back true? Well, of course it will, yes, because it found eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine at index one in string one, eight, six, seven, five, three, oh, nine, because it starts right there. All right, so let's talk a little bit about, and in a lot of my tutorials I've been saying, okay, some of these meta characters, especially that one there, I said, it depends on the context in which they're used. Now, if you remember my tutorial for character classes right here, you know that this character class means that we're searching for an A or an E, right? So if we come down here and it says found an E at index one, right? In regex, A, E, that class in string bear and an A at, uh, index two, right? So it found the E here and the A there, right? Now if we use the uh, the negation symbol, which is the caret there, inside of a character class, and I say inside of a character class because a character class is denoted open and closed by these just square brackets here, this means everything other than an A or an E, right? Everything not that, right? So we get found B and found R, right? When we use the negation on that. All right, now, um, Let's just let's just scroll up here for a moment on this and come back down here on this. And so the the negation symbol is also used as a beginning of the line symbol, right? In other words, so when it's not used inside, and this was inside of a character class, when it's not used inside of a character class, when it just precedes um, something or other, right? It just basically means this must start at the beginning of the string, okay? So our first three digits must be at the beginning of the string by specifying this here, right? And then followed by a dash and then followed by four more digits. Okay, so if we use this regular expression by simply throwing this caret in here, that this is going to be at the beginning of the string, guess what? No match is found for checking on that, right? Using the same regular expression, but we pass back in a valid phone number there, we get found, da 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 da, da right? Okay. So that's kind of cool. So that's kind of what I was talking about, you know, introducing you to, to some new stuff there. All right. So now conversely, could we um, could we still pass our regular expression test here by passing 8675309.9, right? Well, of course we can, because it'll find that inside of that string. We just got this extra thing tacked on there. All right. Now let's um, say, well, how do we want to, you know, ensure that? Well, the dollar sign has a special care, a special uh, meaning here too, and that means that everything, the basically the the expression preceding it, which is this right here, um, must fall at the end of the string. This must be the end of the string here. Okay, so we're going to have three digits followed by a dash followed by four digits that are going to be at the end of the string. All right. So in that particular case. We're gonna have no matches found when we have this extra nine tacked on the end of here, right? Because we're going to have four digits, but the digit right, in, or the uh, character right in front of that is a five. It's not this dash that we're searching for. Okay, so um, putting it all together here, this would be a great expression if you're searching for this particular phone number, valid phone number in there, right? And so putting it all together, if you check for the regular thing, it says found 8675309 at index zero for that expression there, okay? All right, so this is where um, quantifiers become much more useful is checking for, combining them with meta characters, especially for checking things like um, phone numbers, IP addresses, any sort of thing with a sequence there that you need some something or other, you know? So um, yeah, that basically, you know, is what they're used really common for. Anyway, so I am going to go ahead and minimize this, minimize this, and just leave you guys with some final thoughts on this here. So, um, you know, quantifiers may not work how you initially expect them to. Now, now that you understand some basics about how they function, I'm going to do some tutorials that spotlight some of the methods of both the pattern and the matcher classes. That concludes this tutorial. Thanks for watching.